Hi, I'm Tim Wong, and I'm an animal care manager here at the California Academy of Sciences Steinhardt Aquarium. This is a great time to make sure that all of our animals are healthy and happy. We're also checking to make sure that windows are clean and identifying anything that might need to be addressed. We water a rainforest by hand every day. Sometimes we might discover a new nest while we're watering. The watering that we're doing is important naturally for the plants in the exhibit. It also provides a lot of the humidity for the rainforest. It provides also drinking water for birds and butterflies. Particularly for the plants, it can also help reduce the amount of pests that we have. We have a pretty long hose. It's 150 feet, so that can take us all the way around the bola, which is 90 feet tall and 50 feet in diameter. I really like the watering because it really forces you to slow down and take time looking at everything. So looking at the plants more, the butterflies in here, and the birds as well. This is our spice rack. So there's vanilla growing in here and some coffee and some cinnamon. It's just here for people to see what you know, a living specimen of those types of plants actually looks like. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the plants that we use, even in our own kitchen and cooking, come from rainforests. Because we're watering our rainforests by hand every day, it can get pretty wet, so we spend some time making sure to squeegee and clean up the floors before our guests arrive. My emergence chamber. It looks like we have one female atlas moth today that came out. So after our butterflies emerge, we can transport them in a hamper into the habitat. So we're able to release them onto different fruit plates we have in the exhibit or onto some of our nectar plants. Uh, we have a male on the outside of our moth cage and we have a female on the inside. Just to ensure that we don't have reproduction, we keep both sexes separate. You can see that this guy's a male. It has some large feathered antenna, kind of right out of the head over there. And some people think that the wingtips actually look a bit like a snake head. We change out our butterfly fruit every day. We put it out actually mostly for our fruit feeding butterflies, which are morphos and owl butterflies, and occasionally also our birds, because we like to put banana on our fruit plates and they also like the banana. We also water the plants in all of our terrarium animal habitats every day by hand. We have a male and female pair of spiny turtles that live in our rainforest. We feed them once a week with a produce diet. When I'm done in the rainforest in the morning, I'm often getting ready to scuba dive in our Philippine coral reef tank. The time it takes to get the gear together sometimes is about as long as our dive itself, but we want to make sure that we're safe every time we get into the tank. We have a briefing on the dive deck. We will run through all of our checks with our gear, make sure that we have all the tools that we need before we enter the water. We're going to do our best to keep our voices down as much as we can during our 15 minutes together just so we can have the best chance of hearing our diver. But it is 11.30, so shall we get started? All right. Each dive can be a little bit different, but sometimes we're cleaning windows. 
Other times we're propagating and planting coral or getting a closer look to see if there's anything that we need to address. While cleaning our aquarium windows, particularly this window, our bow window, I often spend a lot of time upside down just because it allows us to get a little closer to the bottom of the window without harming any of the coral. It doesn't bother me to be upside down. It's kind of a fun opportunity to be kind of meditative and just kind of flip your whole world and look at the public with a different perspective as we're cleaning the window. Once we're done cleaning our windows, we come back up to the surface and I'm really happy that actually our tender is up here because I can hand him all of my gear and he can help me get out of the water safely. Once I'm out of the water, we'll take apart our dive gear and pretty soon I'll have to get ready for my next job. About every two weeks, we'll get new butterflies in the form of chrysalis in a very special and carefully packaged box from our butterfly suppliers. Here's a view of all the different pupa, the butterfly chrysalis that we receive. They're really also very beautiful, so this is a great opportunity to appreciate all the different colors and forms that they come in. The butterflies come in great shape. This is a perfect time to receive them from another part of the world because they are, in a way, perfectly packaged as a butterfly chrysalis with a hardened cuticle. I often describe the process of unboxing them like opening up a box of chocolates with a lot of different varieties. Once we've inspected and sorted all of our butterflies, we carefully attach them to acrylic rods using low temp, non-toxic hot glue, which is a great way to position them in our butterfly emergence chamber so that the butterflies are able to close and hatch properly. While the butterfly chrysalis are really unique looking, sometimes they don't seem like they are alive, but they're very much alive and might even wiggle a little bit. These are gorgeous. These are Tithoria teresina. They're really one of our favorites because the butterfly chrysalis looks like gold. Once we've finished preparing all of our butterfly pupa, we'll carefully put them into a transport box and then we will take them up to our butterfly emergence chamber in the rainforest. Once we're back in our rainforest, we'll open and inspect our butterfly chamber one last time before carefully putting our rods of different butterfly chrysalis each in their own row so that we can show the guests how the butterflies hatch out and develop their wings. We'll also spray it on the chamber with a little bit of water and mist to make sure that they have the right humidity. Once we're done with the butterflies in the rainforest, I have one more job to do and that's feeding our African penguins. So we got our penguin food here. It's got a bunch of fish in it. It's got herring and capelin, so we're gonna thaw that out. 
I'll go into our commissary kitchen to pick up the fish that we have ready for our African penguins. And I'll give them a nice rinse just to make sure that they're clean before we feed them out to our birds. Many of our birds are picky eaters. Sometimes they won't eat the fish if it just looks a little funny. So we're always trying to pick the very best looking fish to feed our African penguins. Before we enter the habitat, we step into a disinfectant to make sure we're not bringing anything from the outside into our African penguin colony. There's some vitamins and then some meds we often put in the fish, and we do that on the lower level. Some of our birds get glucosamine, which is usually for our birds that are a little bit older or if they have any joint pain, that's helpful for them. Every day we try to pick out a different enrichment item for our birds and today we chose to use bubbles but sometimes we'll offer things like different toys, particularly pool toys or hula hoops that they can interact with in the water. Before our program I still have a lot of cleanup to do so I'm going to put on my waders and we're going to get the habitat cleaned and ready before our program. Our birds eat a lot of fish, so they do produce a lot of waste, which means that we are cleaning our African penguin habitat several times a day. This is uh, some of the nesting material we like to offer during the program. This is a list of all the birds in the habitat, so you can see all the different pair bonded birds. Hey everyone, good afternoon. I'm Tim and this is Sherilyn. We're part of the animal care team here at the museum. So we're gonna be feeding our birds in the water today. During our African penguin show, we like to talk about our conservation for this species. Currently they're critically endangered and one of the things that we've been working on is our conservation breeding program for African penguins. We've participated in working with the species since the 1980s and are currently part of a species survival plan for African penguins. What that really looks like is we are part of a larger network of zoos and aquariums that house African penguins in human care. So for example, if we have any unpaired birds, we can reach out to that network to see if we can find them a mate or another bird we can pair them up with. Sometimes a bird will travel across the country to join our colony here at the academy, or we might send one of our birds to another aquarium or zoo. It's really important right now to share with our guests the work that we're doing to preserve African penguins through this conservation breeding program because it can help people better understand what they can do to make sure that we keep this species around for a long time. Sometimes during the program, a few of our birds don't come out because they might be a little bit shy, but they also might be molting actively, dropping out their feathers, or they also might be sitting on an egg. So we can actually go up to their nest box and give them food right there like room service. Well, it's been a long day, so it's time to clean up and do our final round of checks before heading out of the museum.